Pepsi Cola, P E P S I. That's your smartest cola buy. Pepsi Cola presents Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Harding, Counter Spy. Calling Washington. United States counter spies, especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. Tonight, the case of the murdering messenger. Another counter spy report to the American people. Brought to you each Tuesday and Thursday by Pepsi Cola. Pepsi Cola hits a spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. That's right, you heard what they said. Two full glasses of sparkling Pepsi from one big 12 ounce bottle. You're getting an extra glass full. And what a delicious glass full. The most refreshing, delightful cola that ever tickled your taste. You can't top Pepsi's tangy flavor. And that big, big bottle saves you money, goes twice as far. Pepsi's America's big, big favorite, and America's biggest cola value. So why take less when Pepsi is best? Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember. Why take less when Pepsi is best? And now to Counter Spy. <laughs> In espionage, the penalty for mistakes is death. Every member of the guilty spy ring is doomed by its faraway superiors. Yet the sentence is rarely carried out by direct means. The watchwords are concealment and mystery. In the city of Detroit, a small branch library stands in a quiet side street. One morning, a young man with eyes alert entered the building and went to the main reading room. Excuse me, miss. Yes, sir. I want to turn this book in. Julius Caesar's commentaries. In the original Latin. Yes. You're quite a student, Mr. Argyle. <laughs> Caesar was quite a boy. Are you taking out another book? Uh, no, I'm leaving Detroit very soon. Goodbye, and thanks a lot. Goodbye, Mr. Argyle. I beg your pardon. Yes, sir. I was looking on the shelves for Julius Caesar's commentaries, but it doesn't seem to be there. No, it's right here. Our only copy was just returned a moment ago. Do you want to take it out? Yes, please. Here's my library card. Harry J. Peters. From Peters, Counter-Spy Field Office, Detroit, to David Harding, Washington have just received coded report from counter-spy George Argyle operating undercover inside foreign spy ring in United States. Code used, alternate word and line transposition. What are your orders? Peters, have message decoded in Detroit and hold there. I'm flying Detroit immediately. Harding, this is the original message Argyle left for me in the library book, disguised as a letter home. Thanks, Peter. Still addresses me as Aunt Bessie. Here's the decoded transcript, Aunt Bessie. Thanks, Junior. Dear Mr. Harding, trouble ahead. Last night, the only man in the spy ring I ever saw was killed in a car smash out on Woodward Avenue. A fake accident. There was an accident, Dave, and a man was killed. What's more, I've been ordered to leave my job in the turbojet factory here and go to Memphis, Tennessee. I think the superiors of the spy ring now realize that someone has fed them nothing but false information for a year. I don't believe they know I was the one, but evidently all members of the ring are to be moved around. Oh, fine. <sighs> I don't like that either, Peters. We still don't know who the other members of the ring are. It may be getting dangerous. Want to pull our guy out? And lose three years of our work and preparation? Still, I don't want Argyle to be left entirely alone in Memphis. Is Aunt Bessie worried? Definitely. Uh, Argyle adds here that he'll be at the Hotel Lee. 
Peters, brush up on your southern accent. You're going to be there, too. Mr. Aga? Yes? I'm the hotel fire inspector. Oh, uh, come in. Good to see you, Peters. Any news, Argyle? I got this postcard today. From the Southern Beauty Tourist Bureau, Memphis. Mm -hmm. Guided tours of historic Southland. See monuments and battlegrounds of the war between the states. Special feature, visit the high mountain caves. Uh, you'll notice that last one is circled in red ink. The high mountain caves. And notice here in the schedule of tours... Yes. Another circle of red ink around the date Thursday, 5 p.m. Obviously, that's when my next contact with the spy ring is to be made. Well, look, Argyle, I'd better join the group, too. I think that'll be too risky, Peters. Those tourist groups aren't very large. Whoever the contact is will take a good look at everybody. Well, how are you to be recognized? My name is known to the ring. I'll simply give it when I buy my ticket for the tour. Then I'll just wait and see what happens. Now, folks, we're pretty near finished our tour. Famous high mountain cave. Scene of beauty with the stalactites, the stalagmites. Kind of scary, too. Uh, one more little demonstration before we step outside again into our lovely southern evening. This here underground river we've been following from one of these caves to another ends right here, you see, in a deep well or chasm. Let me tell you, the fellow that falls down here ain't never coming up. You see this rock? I'm going to drop it down. Now, you'll have to listen hard to hear the splash. Ready? There she goes. <laughs> well, that was that. Now, if you'll be so good as to step to the exit there, the bus will return us to Memphis and to your hotels. This here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Excuse me, folks. Wait out there just a minute. One of our members seems to be missing here. <laughs> I'll locate him. I'll be right out here. Hey, mister. Mister? Hey, there you are. Help, please. I... Good heavens, my friend. You've been stabbed. Guide, get me to a doctor quick. But the knife. Don't pull it out, don't. But I must. <laughs> Otherwise, how can I... <coughs> Finish you off for good. And Argyle was stabbed to death right there in the cave, Peters? That's right, Mr. Harding. It was my fault. I should have gone right with Argyle, no matter what he said. Oh, now, don't blame yourself, Peters. You took every reasonable precaution. How are the police handling the case? All members of the tour have been questioned except the guide. He's disappeared, so he must have been the murderer. Peters... In my opinion, this spy ring isn't just being moved around. It's being wiped out. Well, Dave, there's one way to make sure. Let me take Argyle's place. That's a good idea, but how? First, a squib in the papers that Argyle was only wounded. Second, I'll enter a hospital under his name. The murderer will make another try, Peters. All right, let him, Dave. That's exactly what we want. Nurse, you said Mr. Argyle had this here room? Hey, go right in, sir. Ah, oh, Mr. Argyle. How fortunate you were to have lost nothing but a little blood. May I sit down by your bed? I was about to visit you at your hotel, Mr. Argyle, when I read in the papers of the attempt on your life in the high mountain cave. So I came straight here to the hospital. I'm surprised, if I may say so, to find you alive, receiving visitors. It was only a flesh wound, Mr. Uh... Uh, forgive me, Mr. Argyle. My name is Anthony Blix, B-L-I-X, the Tri-State Travel Agency. The reason I was so anxious to see you was to give you this, your river steamship ticket from Memphis to New Orleans. The one you ordered through our office? 
Oh, yes, yes, of course. The boat leaves on Tuesday, Mr. Argyle. Uh, will you be able to travel? I think so, if, if I take it easy. I'm delighted. Uh, will I be seeing you again, Mr. Blix? The world is growing so small, Mr. Argyle, I wouldn't be at all surprised. Oh, by the way, we were unable to get you a cabin entirely to yourself. I'm sorry to say you'll have a cabin mate. Goodbye. To Aunt Bessie from Nephew Argyle. First contact made. Anthony Blix of Tri-State Travel Agency, Memphis. Next contact may be somebody on riverboat to New Orleans. Thank you, Stuart. Put my suitcase down here. Then you may go. Yes. I beg your pardon? Good morning. What are you doing in this cabin? My ticket says I was booked in here. Why are you lying down? Are you ill? I'm recovering from an accident. It's ridiculous. There was nothing ridiculous about it. I mean, you're being booked into this cabin when I was booked in here, too. Obviously a mistake. Obviously. I'll have myself moved right No, out. no, no. It's easier for me. You're halfway settled already. I'll ring for the steward. Buttons right here. Thank you. I'm sorry, Mr... Argyle. Argyle? Well, I'm sorry I was angry. My name is Valerie Arden. Are you going to stay in New Orleans after we get there? That's hard to say. How about you? I live in New Orleans, Mr. Argyle, even though I'm English. Listen, Argyle, I have your next instructions. Yes? On reaching New Orleans, you're to see a man named Avery L. Clark, River Road, number 821. Yes. Tell him I sent you and say that you're applying for the job he has open in Los Angeles. Clear? Clear. There's a steward. Uh, just a minute, steward. Well, Mr. Argyle, I do hope your fever's better. It was a knife wound, Miss Arden. A knife? Good gracious, if I had to kill anyone, I'd use poison or a gun, wouldn't you? Knives are so, uh... So uncertain, aren't they? To Aunt Bessie from Nephew Argyle. Boat contact made by one Valerie Arden. Next contact in New Orleans. Avery L. Clark, 821 River Road. Peters will be safe, Lieutenant Fabian, in this hotel room anyway. Any news, Mr. Harding? Well, I've ordered a complete checkup on that man Blix back in Memphis, Peters. I expect a report very soon. Uh, about Valerie Arden, Peters. She really lives here in New Orleans, runs a high-toned gift shop. About Avery L. Clark, all we know is that he's in the sugar business. Well, Dave, Valerie Arden said I'm to talk to Clark about going to Los Angeles. Well, I think that's just talk, Peters. I'm pretty sure now that every member of this spy ring is marked for death by its own employers abroad. Clark may try to kill you. I'll have to take that chance, Dave. Peters, did either Blix or the woman act like they suspected you're not the real Argyle? No, Lieutenant. But the guide who murdered Argyle in the caves would know I'm not the right man. Well, that's the big risk, Peters. The Blix and the girl have somehow been warned by the murderer, or just leading you on. Now, when are you to see, Clark? The longer I wait, the bigger the risk. I think I'll go right now. 821 River Road. Well? What is it? What is it? Well, don't stand there on the porch gaping. I'm sorry. Uh, may I ask who you are? 
I'm Mr. Clark's housekeeper. Come from Oklahoma, and I don't like New Orleans, and I don't like the riffraff that comes to see Mr. Clark. See him you want to see, I guess. Yes. My name's Argyle. Well, come in, young man, but don't expect me to announce you. He's in the living room. You can go right in and announce yourself. All right, thank you. And tell him not to ring for drinks, because I got the bacon to do. Mr. Clark? Yes. My name's Argyle. Come in. I met a Valerie Arden on the boat from Memphis. She says you need a man for a job in Los Angeles. Argyle, somebody's trying to wipe us out. They tried to get you in Memphis, didn't they? You see? First you, now me. You? Do you know who's trying it? What individual? No. But death for everybody. That's the high command's way of punishing failures. Look at that double window behind me. One pane is broken. Three bullets did it ten minutes ago. Those three bullets are now in my back. What? Yeah. You need a doctor. That's no use. I'm going to die. Whether you're my friend or my enemy, Argyle, never sit with your back to a window. Now, you better get out of here. You'll be caught for my mur... Clark. Say, Mr. Clark, about the bacon, I got to... Say, you, what's the matter with him? He's dead. He was murdered. Murdered? Oh! He's all blood. You murdered him, you riffraff. You murdered him. No, I didn't. Listen, I want you to call the police. Me? If you didn't kill him, why don't you call them? Where are you going? I'm getting out of here. Getting out? You murdering riffraff? But you won't get away with murder. I'm calling the police, and I'm shouting it from the house up. You murdering riffraff? They'll catch you! They'll catch you! Hey, you! What? You're under arrest, buddy. There was a murder. You under arrest. Are you the police? Yeah. Me and my friend here. Come on. Where? We got a car. Come on, snap it. I'd like to see your credentials. Credentials? Papers to prove your police. Sure. Hey, Bing, show them what do you call them? Credentials? Oh. There's our credentials, buddy. Come on, Bing. We're taking this guy for a ride. Back to Counter Spy in just a moment. But first, Pepsi Cola hits a spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. Lots more value, lots more zest. Why take less when Pepsi's best? More and more, among fellows and girls, among mothers and dads, you hear that sane and sensible question why take less when Pepsi's best? No budget, no allowance ever had a better friend than tangy, sparkling Pepsi Cola. Because one big 12 ounce Pepsi bottle gives you two delicious drinks. That's twice as much tangy taste, twice as much delicious Pepsi, to go just twice as far. That's why more and more families say, why take less when Pepsi's best? Yes, families like yours and mine, families all over America, they're all saying, why take less when Pepsi's best? Pepsi Cola's so delicious and each bottle makes two drinks. It is certainly the cola for the purchaser who thinks everybody's drinking Pepsi. Just compare it with the rest. So much more and so much finer. Why take less when Pepsi's best? Today, tomorrow, always. Get America's biggest cola value. Take home a carton of six big, big Pepsi bottles. Insist on Pepsi at the store. And say Pepsi at the fountain. Say Pepsi at the stand. Say Pepsi. Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Why take less when Pepsi's best? And now, back to Counter Spy. It is late night on the shores of Lake Pontchartrain outside New Orleans. A house with all blinds shut stands secluded behind a grove of cypress trees. And inside the lonely house... Uh. Well, Mr. Argyle, 
I must say you took a long time to recover your senses. Oh, Miss Valerie Arden. Were you the one who hit me on the head? Good gracious, no, Mr. Argyle. That was Bing. For your information, we're in my house, and both Bing and George are in the very next room. That's interesting. I brought along some brandy. I thought you might need it. How about you? Oh, I don't need a drink. I haven't committed a murder. Meaning Clark, hmm? Who did it? You. Me? You know better than that. Your men must have been watching. Clark's housekeeper said you did it. So you grabbed her, too. You work fast. I couldn't afford to have her screeching all over New Orleans. Neither could I. Until I was sure her screeching was useful. Useful? You're a counter-spy, aren't you, Mr. Argyle? If I were a counter-spy, I wouldn't have shot Clark. I'd have arrested him, wouldn't I? Clark told me somebody was trying to wipe all of us out. Is that you? He's crazy. Not anymore. He's dead. But it's a wild idea. It's absolutely fantastic. Who's next? Blix? You saw Blix in Memphis, didn't you? In the hospital, yes. But you were in Memphis, too. You could have arranged my little knifing. You could have shot Clark tonight. Mr. Argyle, I think I will have some brandy. With pleasure. Thank you. You're really scared, aren't you? So I guess it's not you who's trying to wipe us out. It's Blix. Mr. Argyle, why couldn't you be the one sent out from the home office to get rid of us all? If I were, why would I have stabbed myself back in that Tennessee cave? Wounds can be faked. Where were you knifed? Here, yeah, in the side. Right there. Oh. It's a dirty trick to hit me there. Well, I've made sure you were knifed. Yes, haven't you? That knocks out your theory of my being the official killer. But not of your being a counter-spy. Maybe you could fool Blix alone or me alone. But not the two of us together. Suppose we settle that now, tonight. How? Blix is way up in Memphis. Oh, no. He arrived here in New Orleans this morning, and in a few minutes he can be here and we can find out whether he murdered Clark. And whether or not you're a counter-spy. I shall phone him, Mr. Argyle. Meantime, have another drink, won't you? Harding speaking. Go ahead. Lieutenant Fabian, Mr. Harding, I got bad news. Let's hear it, Lieutenant. We saw Peters come out of Clark's house fast. But before he could reach us, two men grabbed him and took him away in a car. Well, did you follow? Oh, well, we lost him on a turn, Mr. Harding. So we went back to the house and found Clark shot to death. You any idea where Peters is? No. But I'm on my way to your headquarters with a report on Blix from Memphis. He was the one who abducted the real guide in the caves, took his place, and murdered Argyle. When Blix knows Peters is not Argyle. It's lucky they caught him in Memphis. They didn't catch him in Memphis, Lieutenant. No. He's probably here in New Orleans right now. And he's the one who knows that Peters is a plant. We've got to find him and stay close to him, or Peters won't live out the night. My dear Valerie, how exquisite you look, as always. Hello, Blix. We've been waiting for you. And Mr. Argyle. As I suggested in Memphis, it is a small world, isn't it? And getting smaller. Blix, something's gone seriously wrong among us. Clark was killed earlier tonight. Oh? Perhaps because he'd become too expensive. Like you, Blix. And me. And Mr. Argyle. I wasn't aware that Mr. Argyle was so expensive. He is, if he's really a counter-spy. She's crazy. Blix, you ought to know. You saw Argyle in Memphis... He is a counter-spy, Bing and George are handy. They can take care of him tonight. Valerie, you're being ridiculous. I trust Mr. Argyle as, uh, as much as I trust you. And how much is that? If Argyle's to be trusted, then who tried to kill him? Who murdered Clark? Blix, have you been sent here to get rid of us all? Valerie. What? I heard a car outside for your men. In the front room? Why? Go and ask them about the car. But... I heard. Please trust me, Valerie. Go and see him. 
Very well. Listen, Argyle, don't waste a second. Both our lives depend on it. I know you're not really Argyle. I've known it since I saw you in the hospital in Memphis. I realized then that my game was up, so I sent you along to meet Valerie and Clark purposely as evidence of my goodwill. You are a counter-spy, aren't you? What if I were? I'm ready to tell you everything you want to know about this spy group in exchange for your letting me go free. So you're the man sent out to wipe out this group? Mm Mm-hmm. The information the real Argyle sent us turned out all wrong. All of us are supposed to pay for that. You don't add up, Lix. If you've been betraying your own friends by exposing Valerie Arden and Clark to me, why did you murder Clark? A shrewd question, Mr. Argyle, or whatever your real name is. Frankly, I thought it best at the last moment to make myself look good, both to my own people at home and to you. Whatever happened, I'd have a good story to tell. Smart boy. Now, if you're really a counter-spy, well, let me go free. I can save us both from this woman, those two plug uglies. If not, I'll have to kill you. Now. Did you really hear a car outside? Of course not. What's your answer? I'm sure I hear a car. Maybe two. You're evading my question, Mr. Argyle. That means that you're not a counter-spy. Yes, I see I've made a mistake. That's easily corrected with a gun. Drop your gun, Blake. The house is surrounded. What? Drop it, quick. Got it, Mr. Harding. Sorry. That was so close, Peter. It's all right now. How about the woman? Lieutenant Fabian, these men are out front. They've already got her and her two gunmen. And here we've got the murderer of Argyle and of Clark, haven't we? Mr. Harding, you mistake me. I just made an important offer to this gentleman here. A full report. Blix, I'll make you an offer. You give us that full report and we'll see that it reaches the government that employed you. They wanted this ring wiped out. Now you can report complete success with some help from the counter-spies. When your friends drop in, be generous, but be thrifty, too. Serve plenty of delicious Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi's big 12-ounce bottle gives you not just one sparkling glass full, but two. Get a carton of six and serve 12 delicious drinks. Yes, Pepsi is America's biggest cola value. You get twice the tangy taste, twice the refreshment, twice the Pepsi. So why take less when Pepsi is best? Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Pepsi-Cola hits the spot, two full glasses, that's a lot. Lot more value, lot more zest. Why take less when Pepsi is best? Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday, same time, same station to Counter Spy. Listen next Tuesday for the exciting counter-spy case of a cold-blooded professor. The secret cellar that hid the mysterious inventions of a calculating killer. The dark patches on the square film that indicated the suspect would visit a certain type of store. And the hit-and-run victim who used a leg hook and kick to catch the carrier of vitriolic acid off guard. That's next Tuesday's counter-spy. Make sure to tune in to Case of a cold-blooded killer on Counter Spy. Tonight's Counter Spy program originated in New York, was directed by William M. Sweets, and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer with music by Jesse Crawford. Counter Spy is a Phillips H. Lord production for Pepsi-Cola. Enjoy some Pepsi, ice cold tonight. (laughs) 